Welcome to Shenzhen Metro, but more importantly, welcome to the future. This railway station is larger than every single airport terminal in the U.S. On the cliffs and river valleys of Chongqing, China has built a railway project so large it redefines what a station can be. The Chongqing East Railway Station, engineered like a small city, moves people and goods at high speed through some of the country's toughest terrain. Its construction pushed robotics, modular building, and AI to new limits. This is how a mountain city turned a bottleneck into a national gateway. Mountain City Bottleneck Chongqing is one of China's strangest and most spectacular cities, a metropolis draped over mountains, gorges, and river basins, where flat ground is rare. The city grew vertically to cope. Elevated streets stack above one another, towers plug into hillsides, and the ground floor can be the 5th, 10th, or 20th level, depending on where you stand. That dramatic topography makes for a thrilling skyline and a nightmare for transit. Tracks cannot stay level without running headlong into cliffs, so routes twist through tunnels, leap across deep valleys, and in a few places even pass through the upper floors of buildings. Inside the city, those compromises are manageable. But for long-distance travel, the mountains throttled speed. High-speed lines to other regions had to snake around obstacles, slowing trains and stretching timetables. In a country where velocity fuels growth, that delay had real costs. Goods moved more slowly. Students missed opportunities at distant universities. Perishable produce had trouble reaching markets in time, and workers lost hours commuting to better jobs elsewhere. Worse, Chongqing sits at a crucial national junction that connects inland provinces with major ports. When that node is slow, the entire network feels it. China didn't wait for committees and hearings to grind through years of debate. True to its just-build ethos, the country proposed an audacious fix. Turn the city's weakness, its terrain, into the stage for a new kind of rail hub that would knit Chongqing back into the national bloodstream and make it a centerpiece of fast modern travel. Building the Superstation. The plan was simple in concept and staggering in scale. Construct the world's largest railway station, run by trains exceeding 200 miles per hour, to tie together Chongqing's districts and counties like organs joined by high-speed arteries. The structure would function as a city within a city, a place where regional and national lines converge and disperse with precision. Finding land for a 1.22 million square meter complex in a mountain city seemed impossible until engineers decided to make their own flat ground. Bulldozers and dump trucks moved roughly 10 million cubic meters of earth day and night, carving terraces and platforms where hills once stood. A smooth, solid base emerged, and in 2022, full construction began. Human crews were joined by a regiment of machines. Laser-guided bulldozers and AI-directed graders leveled surfaces to millimeter accuracy, finishing the job roughly three times faster than traditional methods and working through heat, rain, and darkness without pause. Concrete foundations were poured and robot finishers brought them perfectly true. As walls rose, robotic installers hoisted facade panels approaching a ton each and set them precisely into place. Automated welders and assembly robots tackled overhead pipes and steel joints at blistering speed. On the ground, mobile patrol units scanned for safety hazards. Workers without helmets, stray vehicles, blocked exits cutting incidents by an estimated 90%. Behind the scenes, AI scheduled shifts, balanced deliveries, optimized paving sequences, and highlighted design conflicts before they reached the site. Augmented reality tools let engineers visualize hidden systems in the field. Temperature and curing sensors prevented cracks and kept materials within tight tolerances even in brutal summers. To compress the timeline further, China leaned on modular construction. Pillars, trusses, cladding sections, and roof modules were fabricated off-site, shipped in by rail, and assembled like an enormous kit. What might have taken five to 10 years elsewhere was finished in about 38 months. Bureaucracy did not set the pace, engineering did. And speed did not come at the expense of ambition. The result is both colossal and meticulously executed. Architecture in motion. Chongqing East is frequently compared to a small city for good reason. 
Spanning 1.2 million square meters, around 170 football fields, it is designed to handle extraordinary flows. At peak, more than 16,000 people can move through the station every hour. The architecture is modern and bold, all sweeping roof lines and light-filled halls, but its most important quality is how it feels to use. The planners insisted on barrier-free circulation, so passengers move as water would down broad concourses into clear ticketing zones, through wide portals to the platforms, or up and down glassy elevators that tie every level together. The geometry is grand, the wayfinding is simple. Nature shaped the aesthetic. The great roof is carried by slender pillars that flare into branching canopies near the top, a form inspired by the region's hardy wonga trees. Light wells between those branches pull sunlight deep into the hall, cutting the need for artificial lighting during the day. On the eastern end, a viewing terrace frames sunsets over the river valleys. Even the roof pattern nods to the Yangtze. Its skylights are arranged like ripples, scattering daylight in shifting bands across the interior. The roof is a feat unto itself, covering roughly 120,000 square meters and weighing around 16,500 tons it was built in large modular sections. Robotic cranes lifted each piece into place and the assembly moved across the station like a ship's hull being plated together. Today, that roof is the complex most recognizable signature. Calling this place a station undersells it. Inside are restaurants, fast food counters, cafes, and shopping streets. The amenities aren't decorative. They're part of a strategy to handle huge crowds comfortably and make waiting time productive. The station feels like a downtown that happens to dispatch trains, engine of a new city. The station anchors a larger plan, the East Station Hub New City, a 3.5 kilometer district woven around the rail complex. Entrances spill directly into plazas and squares. Surrounding blocks are slated for hotels, retail, food streets, and offices so that arrivals step into a living neighborhood instead of a parking lot. Buses, trams, and cabs feed right into the concourses turning the hub into what planners call a zero-transfer city you leave home, board a local mode, and glide onto a high-speed train with minimal friction. For business, the logic is irresistible. Logistics firms are clustering near the tracks to exploit Chongqing's central position. Companies can recruit from a wider talent pool because fast trains shrink distances that once felt prohibitive. The rail backbone itself is formidable, the hub includes 15 platforms and 29 tracks across three yards, and seven national high-speed corridors converge here, drawing streams from Beijing, Shanghai, Wuhan, and beyond. Trains on these lines reach about 217 miles per hour, slashing travel times. A trip that once took six hours to Zhang Jiaji now takes roughly two. Chengdu is about an hour away. Major destinations like Xi'an, Wuhan, Changsha and Kunming fall into three-hour or better ranges, while megacities such as Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen are within a single day's comfortable ride. For Chongqing's residents, those numbers translate into choices. Students can attend top universities without losing entire days in transit. Workers can commute across regions without surrendering their evenings. Farmers and manufacturers can ship fresher produce and higher-value goods to broader markets. Nationally, the hub removes a stubborn choke point and smooths the flow of people and cargo across China's east-west and north-south axes. And this is only the first phase. Several urban rail lines 8, 24, and 27 are still under construction, and star-shaped high-speed routes are being extended to strengthen both passenger and freight flows. As those spines click into place, the station's reach and the city's economic gravity will grow again. High-speed tourism Boom. Tourism is one of China's major engines, and Chongqing East is designed to feed it. The station itself is a draw. Travelers come to see the country's largest rail hub, its soaring hall, and its signature roof. But the real payoff is how it unlocks iconic destinations along the high-speed network. From Chongqing, visitors can reach Chengdu's giant pandas, the terracotta warriors in Xi'an, or the misted sandstone pillars of Zhang Jiajie in just a few hours. The station becomes an essential stop on itineraries that knit multiple regions into a single trip. The experience is built for newcomers. Digital wayfinding helps non-locals navigate the concourses, 
announcements play in multiple languages, and Wi-Fi is available throughout. Of roughly 5,000 seats, about 1,000 integrate USB charging, echoing the conveniences of a modern airport. As the network settled in, traffic surged. The chongqing Jiangjiajie high-speed route grew from roughly 770,000 to about 1.07 million passengers per month. Local ripple effects followed. Fengji County reported tourism up by around 20%, while businesses along the Three Gorges Reservoir expanded to meet demand, generating on the order of 10 billion yin in a single year. Those gains compound as the unfinished lines open and the surrounding district fills out with hotels, restaurants, and cultural venues. The hub is less a terminal than a lever, prying open access to inland wonders and turning quick rail jumps into a national habit. Sustainability and payback. China's torrent of construction often invites a fair question. What's the environmental cost? In this case, the answer is surprisingly positive. Chongqing East was engineered to meet China's three-star green building standard, the highest national rating. Solar arrays on the vast roof feed clean electricity into the grid. Daylighting from skylights slashes power used for illumination. Rainwater is collected and reused to irrigate nearby parks. Cooling plants are shared with adjacent buildings to cut peak loads and improve efficiency. The scale is massive, but the footprint is thoughtfully managed. Critics also warn about debt. Yet China consistently argues, backed by sector statistics, that rail is a productive investment. For every 100 million yuan funneled into railway infrastructure, the economy returns roughly 260 million yuan in GDP and supports around 60,000 jobs across supply chains and services. In other words, the network pays back by knitting markets together, mobilizing labor, and raising productivity. Chongqing East distills that philosophy. It solves a hard engineering problem in unforgiving terrain. It accelerates trade, study, and work across regions. It turns an interchange into a place people want to be. And it models a no-transfer urban form that other nations from Indonesia and Thailand to parts of Africa are beginning to adopt. Make the station the centerpiece, integrate metro, bus, and taxi flows, and reduce the need for private cars. Where some countries spend years arguing over permits, this project reached completion in the time others might still be debating. In the end, the station is less a building than a statement. When design, technology, and political will align, even a mountain city can reinvent its future at high speed. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Epic Dive for more amazing documentaries.